Welcome, I'm Bill Anderson, you're listening to Expat Radio, and I'm coming live from the Costa del Sol. I have to say it's been a very, very hot week here on the Costa del Sol. I was up in one of the mountain villages on uh, Tuesday and it was 43 degrees in the shade. I am delighted um, to welcome back a regular contributor, physical therapist, Marcel Salazar. Welcome, Marcel. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for having me back. And yes, it's been crazy, crazy weather here in terms of the heat and the humidity is the thing that really is a challenge, to be honest. So, uh, yeah, that I find quite difficult. Yeah, it, it, it's it's the kind of weather, though, that, you know, you, you're drinking and drinking and drinking. And you don't even need to go for a pee because I think you just sweat it all out. It's all coming out, exactly. And you're not even aware of it, which is both gross and also very important because uh, most people are not aware of just how much you need to get into your body. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. Right. And and we 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 also have this this additional little um, pleasure here on on the coast. People who come on holiday, and I think come with with one small cabin bag, and, and some of them seem to wear the same clothes all week. And you're standing back. I don't disagree. I, I absolutely. The less you can wear, the better, really. Yeah, but when you're standing behind them in the supermarket, sometimes you get this whiff, you know, and you think, uh, yeah. time yeah. to change the t-shirt, mate, you know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Obviously, I wouldn't suggest standing perhaps so close to them. Maybe that's where you're going wrong there, Bill. Maybe maybe just you know not having your nose over their shoulder is perhaps yeah. Not such a good but the idea, thing is, so. if 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 you if you give it more than about three feet, somebody nips in in front of you. You know, this is true. This is Spain. You're right. This is a possibility. They may not realise you're in the queue. <laughs> Marcel, you you're posing us a question for today. Do yes. you want to improve your posture? Yes. Yes. The answer is often yes. And the, 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 the question is a good one because most people don't realize just how important it is to improve your posture Yeah. and how it affects the rest of your life. Right. Okay. I, I'm, I, I get to ask the silly questions, Marcel. Good. What do like we them. mean? What do we mean by posture? Posture. So posture by definition is simply the way that you hold yourself either in a seated or standing position. Right. And the ideal posture, you have three curves in your spine. Okay. So most people sometimes think that the spine is completely straight and that's not the case at all. You have three natural curves occurring in your spine. And what is in the neck? One is in the mid torso just about your chest line and the other one is in your lower back and it's almost like and if you're on video you'll see this it's almost like a double s effect right okay and those curves are completely natural and we want them but what we don't want is an excess curve so we don't want too much of a curve in the neck and we don't want too much curve in the upper back where we see it rounding forward and right. we don't want too much curve in the lower back where we see the back arching out or flattening so we just want the right amount of curve right okay so really um posture primarily is relating to the um the, the position that we hold our spine in um Correct. whether our head is forward back shoulders i guess come into that as well don't they yes exactly so what we want ideally is that the ears are above the shoulders and the shoulders are above the hips when we're standing in a neutral position. Right, okay. Now, it's difficult to see that yourself. This is where you would have somebody assess you or look at you or the best way is to take a photo. And some people are shocked when you take a photo either from behind them without a shirt on uh, or from the side of them without a shirt on. Uh, then you can see just how much, for example, the head is further forward than it should be, or the back is much more rounded and the shoulders are forward and you've got almost a hump in the upper back. Or in some cases, and most commonly in women, where the lower back is very arched and the bum sort of sticks out a little bit. And that's mm -hmm. uh, an excessive curve as well. And so all of those, those markers are indicators of potential problems. So that's where the first port of call for somebody like me, or in particular, uh, the team that I now have on board, uh, where we do postural assessment, uh, is the first thing we would do is look and give an assessment, first of all, to see what's going on with the spine and the body. 
Right. Well, you know, I, I have to put my hands up here and, and say that I, I don't always have the best posture. Um, <laughs> Every, I, I, would, I would say that you're not in a minority. I think the majority yeah. of people don't have great posture. And uh, it's no, it's not through anyone's fault necessarily. No, but but I, I, I tell you, it sounds like I'm making excuses here, Marcel, and, and they're not really... But you you know you know we have a lot of trees uh, here on on the pavements and things you know to provide shade, and I think they're all um, trimmed by five foot four Andalusian gardeners. <laughs> so I, I find I find myself constantly sort of looking up and ducking down to ducking sort of avoid sc scratching my my solar panel on on the the, the low hanging trees, you know. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, you are known for wearing a hat as well. So that doesn't add an extra foot because I know you like your, your very high Stetson as well. Yeah, so yeah, the 10 gallon. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah I, well, actually, one of the reasons I wear a hat is obviously just, just to keep the sun off the head. But um, the, the, the other one is that, you know, it's, it's less painful getting your hat scratched than it is getting your head scratched. Correct. <laughs> Correct. And that is a problem. And you're right, stooping down if you're very, very tall. So obviously, the taller you are, very often the harder it is to maintain good posture. But then also, if you carry more body weight, so if you're a little bit heavier than you should be, yeah. that can affect your posture massively. If you are, uh, I'll say this carefully for the uh, delicate ears listening, if you are a well-endowed lady in front, yes. uh, then obviously that will pull you forward and that can round your upper back or put a lot of stress through your upper back. Um, if you are not very active and you sit down watching TV or you're using an iPad, we've done the iPad topic uh, yeah, last sure. month, uh, that can hugely impact your, your posture from your upper back. Um, sofas are deadly for the lower back. Um, so there are a number of things that you can do. If you're doing any one of those things for extended periods of time, the problem is that that affects your posture and that affects your strength. And posture really comes down to strength. Yeah. D d does um, does the posture that, that, that we routinely have, albeit that it may not be a very good posture, then start to affect the musculature around these areas? And, um, in, you know, d d does it alter the musculature? Yes. So that leads into the next part of the assessment process. So when oh, okay. we're looking at your posture... We're then going to look at the muscles and indeed how they can affect what's called rotation. Okay. So your body will sometimes rotate to compensate for certain muscular imbalances, exactly as you've just said. So for example, uh, where we might see rotation is one shoulder, let's say your dominant shoulder, in my case, my left shoulder might be further forward than my right shoulder. So that's creating rotation through my upper body and that can affect my mid back. So I might be getting mid back problems. I might be getting shoulder problems. I might be getting neck problems because yeah. all of that has translated to the position of my shoulder being incorrect because my posture isn't right and I'm rotated forward. There are many forms of rotation, but that's an example of one. Yeah, so, it, yes. it, it is interesting though, Marcel, isn't it? That very often where we feel the pain is not really where it's coming from. Exactly. Oh, absolutely. That's very, very common and, and bang on. That you get the feeling of referred pain is, mm. is super, super common because it's as you say, it's it's. Let's say you've got neck pain, but actually it relates very much to the position of your rib cage and your mid thoracic or your mid back. Right. So that absolutely is very very relevant, and that is where postural assessment becomes absolutely crucial. Sure. Um, so that's where we can help out for sure, definitely. Mm. And obviously, we're, the, the the only time we tend to respond is when we're in pain. Yeah. Yeah. And and w w one of the things that I've noticed is, is that, you know, b b because of the work I do down here, I quite often people will send me photos of, of me, you know, taking photos and whatever. And I'll sometimes yeah. take a look at them and think, oh, my God, you know, uh, I should have my back straighter or I should have my shoulders further right. back. And and, yeah. and it, it, it does it does kind of hit me sometimes that. Yeah. Oh, so now when I'm getting a photo taken, I think, right, OK, straighten up. 
and, 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 and don't look so sloppy and get the shoulders back a bit and whatever. Exactly, exactly, exactly. And that is, that's the only time when you get to see other people's perspective is when, yeah. it's when you have a photo taken. So that's why we would do, for example, assessment on site here. Uh, we, we would use uh, videography and, and photography to take images and then monitor your progress over time. You see, so yeah. that's the kind of technical way of doing it, which is really handy using technology to be able to do that. But exactly as you've said, for, for uh, personally, when I take photos of myself, I, I've always noticed that I have a slight hitch in my neck going over to the left. Really? So it's fascinating. So I do do certain exercises. I get that certain things done in order to create balance in my neck because I've always had a slight shift from a very young age over in one direction, which I don't feel, but I see in photos because of course I know what to look for. So it's, right. it's interesting. And if anyone knows what they're looking for, they'll see it in me too. Right. So is, is, is that why they call you one hung low? <laughs> no, that's not why they call me that, but, uh, <laughs> but uh, that, that's why they say I only can walk, look in, to the left. You know, I can only turn left. That's fine. A bit like in Zoolander. Anyway, yeah, no, it's uh, it's it, it's a bit of a problem because I'm also very left-handed, uh, right. and I play left-handed sport, which is paddle, right. which uses a lot of stress on one side. So I tend to feel that in my neck whenever I play. So that's a, an imbalance that I have to look to try and address on a regular basis, and it but makes sense and it works. Is, is is this is this fairly typical though, Marcel? That you know, a left-handed person like yourself would tend to have this problem on one side, and a right-handed person would tend to have it on the opposite side. I mean, is, is is that something that we need to live with, or something we need to be careful of? It's something that you need to be absolutely aware of, because if you're very single-side dominant, then it's much more likely that you're going to get a rotation in that direction. Right. But it's not an indication that you're going to get pain in that direction. So it could be that you're right-handed dominant or right foot dominant. And so mm. you do a lot of stuff with one side, but actually you get pain on the left side because of compensation, which is another uh, aspect of the assessment that we do. Right. So compensation is obviously um, a big part of it. So it's, 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 it does depend on where are you, where are your muscles stronger and where are you compensating for those stronger muscles or that rotation. Right. And so, again, it might be that you're getting pain on the left side, but you use a lot of your right hand. But, of course, it could be the other way. It's much more common that you're, you're using a right arm and it's a right arm shoulder a problem or a right forearm problem because you're using a mouse a lot and the position of the mouse yeah. is not very good. So those types of things. And golf, where we see this in sport, absolutely, where we've got golfers who obviously are going to be left or right-handed. We've got tennis and paddle players who are going to be left or right-handed. That's where we're going to see this, this, this imbalance very often in muscles and muscle tone as well. So, yeah, definitely plays a part. Yeah, I, I I can see D D D Dave is, is desperate to come in and ask something. Oh, because... Mitch, I'm, it. I'm <laughs> playing tomorrow, right? I'm playing tomorrow. And I'm back to squat. I'm back to good as new now. After I did loads of different stretches and all sorts after what Marcel said the, the last time. And now, okay. oh, I'm like, you won't believe it, mate. Now I can, I can, well, I can bend over backwards and touch the floor. Now I can, I can, and do a <laughs> whatever you used to do. What was it called? Can you now? bring your ankles behind your ears? No, no, that's another website. That. Uh, anyway, that's a very but, different website. Uh, I thought that's what you'd go for first. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, what I tell you, there's a guy. If you go on the when you're watching the goal, there's a guy called uh, oh, I can't think of his name now. Cyril Hatton, right? And when you his posture is horrendous. And if you look at his back when he's putting, the hump he's got on his back, he's only young. He's only about 23, 24, and yep. it's really, really bad. And if you, if you, I was looking at him thinking, if he's like that now. Give that another 10, 15, 20 years time, he's going to be in a right mess. He's only Absolutely. Going to be in a career. Absolutely. And so, and the interesting thing is, is that obviously his putting technique probably take, takes into account the fact that he has this hump in his upper back. Now, some people are f more flexible at certain parts of their spine. So uh, using myself as an example, I'm more flexible like that leaning forward where my upper back will curve forward than I am in extending and allowing myself to 
fully straighten up. But if as long as I do exercises that strengthen that part of my spine, it's not, it's not a problem. Yeah. It's not a problem. But for somebody like that, in the long run, absolutely. Unless he is conscious, does things to protect it, it will. It probably is a problem for him, or it certainly will be a problem for him going mm. forward. You so. can see it. It's, bl- it's really bad. When you watch it on the telly, if you, Cyril Hatton is called, and he's, he's not, he's not, like I said, he's only early 20s, and you see yeah. it. You, no, that's really bad. But what I noticed, one thing that the penny dropped for me this week, I've been, I've been on the practice area for, for eight hours the, yeah. this week on the, at the golf club. And what I realised was that when I'm sw- if you if you if there's golfers out there, one thing to help you back and one thing that one of my best mates that plays on the Legends Tour was telling me is when, you, when you're setting up is to hitch your back, basically. So when you're standing, you're gripping the club to actually set your bum as if someone's got hold of your belt loop at the back and pulled you ah, up. Ah, okay. And that and that sets your spine. So when you yeah. pivot, you, when you pivot, those are your bottom, your palm is your hips and the top is your, is your shoulders. So you're doing yes. that, not, yeah. not going all over the place like that yeah. when, you know, when there's when there's no no set and there's no lock. In what I did, in just hitching myself up a little bit, my bum up in the air like that. You yeah. get this hitch position, you set yourself, and all you're doing then is that, is that. So you're not creating a problem with your back. Okay, mm-hmm. so what's happening there is there's there's two things that I wanted to mention now. That condition that you just mentioned about the, uh, the young guy with the curve in the upper back, there's actually a name for a curvature in your upper back that yeah. you're not in control of, and that's called kyphosis. So some people may have heard of that before, which is a genuine condition whereby... He's not constantly in that position. It's just when he's putting, right? That you can definitely see that rounder position. Yeah. But if he were to maintain that curvature in his upper back, then he would develop a condition called kyphosis, which is very common and obviously more severe in people with literal humps, humpbacks, you know, yeah. uh, which is very severe. But it can start off slow and get worse over time. And it's absolutely controllable um, and reversible as well with certain um, activities. But what you're talking about there is what starts, which is a part of the postural assessment and treatment process, is core engagement. Yeah. So when you hitch your back, as you say, what you're doing is you're creating a curve in your lumbar spine, which is called lordosis. So lordosis is when you curve your your lower back so your bum's tilted outwards a bit more. Yeah. And that what that does is it puts your pelvis tilted forward and it gives you more of a stronger core. Yeah. And when you are most men are a little bit flat through their lower backs, depending on their posture, but most men are flat through their backs. If you have a bigger belly, that can sometimes make you arch your back a little bit more, but you've got a weakened core because you've got a big heavy belly. Yeah. So by doing that, you can actually create more of a solid base in the core of your body by arching your, your back and, and tilting your pelvis forward a little bit like that. So that's interesting that you've, uh, you've highlighted that because that would be um, a, a, a process, shall we say, of engaging the core muscles. But it's definitely not this, this something that I would recommend people to walk around doing. You know, you oh, no, walk no. around with your bum <laughs> Consciously. No, you might be giving the wrong. <laughs> you might be giving the wrong impression. Hey, ho! Would... <laughs> so, M- 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 Marcel, you know, mm-hmm. you, we, we have talked about um, previously about people on on their, their phones and their iPads and things like that, and yeah. and, and you touched there a, a little bit on you know if people are working computers, position of the mouse and things like that, you know yeah. how how much d- d- does um, sort of working conditions. Uh, influence or effect do you think um, our, our posture you know and, and uh, thinking about 80%, everything 80 to 90 percent of of posturally related injuries are because of the the work environment right so the thing that's working against us all the time is gravity yeah now gravity is great because it makes us stronger but if we don't help ourselves a little bit then it helps to make us, unfortunately, compress us as well. Mm -hmm. So the older we become, the more compressed, and as we know, the shorter we get, the older we, the more we age, right? Now, that can be controlled to a certain extent by doing 
regular posture exercises and or strength exercises. Um, so those things will help to slow down the compressive forces of gravity. Right. But in addition to that, if you are working at a desk, if you are doing uh, working from your bed, as we discussed, uh, Dave, take it easy. Um, and then if we are talking about um, working from your home office, but it's not correctly set up, sure. that can work against your posture mm. and create problems for you. So yes, absolutely. If you're working from an iPad where your screen is directly beneath you and your head is tilted forward, as we talked extensively about last, last month, uh, that will absolutely affect your posture. If you're using your mobile phone more than, you know, 15 minutes in any one go, that will definitely affect your posture. So it's right. 100% affected. I mean, I, I, I know you've got a lot of other things that you want to talk about, Marcel, but I, the, the other thing um, that just dawned on me, and I, I would like your take on it, is um, our beds and the kind of mattresses that we have. You know, it doesn't happen to us at home because um, Vicky's really uh, specific about the kind of mattress that she likes, you know. But sometimes yeah. when we've been away, you, you, you get up in the morning and, and literally your, your body, your back, your shoulders, everything hurts. Yeah. Um, can, can you, I actually used to, I, I used to know someone years ago in the UK who had back problems and she slept with a coffin lid under her mattress. <laughs> So she didn't sleep on what? on the coffin <laughs> lid, but she had the coffin lid under the mattress, and that, that was where she slept because she said it helped her posture and helped her back. Someone should have put it on the top of her one night for a laugh. So, and she was coming on her face. She for, really... for, 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 for if people... you're on video, live video, just to verbalise my face right now, it's a face <laughs> of confusion. Okay, because right now there's a lot of questions that come to mind that I'm thinking, first of all, how did you come to know this lady? Second of all, uh, which way round did she have the coffin lid? Uh, and, and I, you know, I, yeah. I've, got, I've got the answers, Marcel. She said, you want to come round for a coffee one day? To his house? <laughs> by the way, by the way, if you get lucky, but I've just got to warn you, there's a coffin lid under my bed, under my mask. <laughs> And for how long did you live with her, Bill? Oh, I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, his, handles on it, his handles on the side so you can hold on for grim death as well. This, this was one of these situations that one or two people knew it. And whenever whenever they got together, they, 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 they love to regale the story of this lady with a coffin lid under her bed. Right. <laughs> under her Good. mattress, okay. rather. So, all right. So let's get, for clarification, are we talking about she slept on top of the coffin no lid. no she had the coffin lid under her mattress where she slept no no i get that but which way round was the coffin lid i it, it was long ways but i mean i mean she slept on top of a rounded semi-oval shaped coffin uh, lid. no 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 it, it, it was it, it, one of these cheap pine coffins it, it, it wasn't, ah, <laughs> it wasn't. Right, right. okay good thank you thank you because for me i'm thinking a rounded that's not gonna work but this is obviously a flat <laughs> coffin right okay yeah it was one of the cheap ones that came from Croatia. Right. Like, yeah it was a sort of i, I think it was an ikea like, one my, you know <laughs> my coffin is going to be very high quality okay so that's that's why i'm not thinking flat right fine also, fine okay <laughs> right. Okay. Well, clearly she needed something hard under her when she slept. And that if that worked for her, then that's great. So yeah. <laughs> Bill's just I uh, Dave's just signed off for that point. So <laughs> um so that's that that makes sense. And that is the firmness of a mattress, a given mattress, um, is absolutely relevant, a hundred percent. And yes, so when people go on holiday, they stay in unknown mattresses, perhaps potentially very old mattresses as well. And a mattress is a very, very important acquisition for everyone. It is definitely an investment because you spend one third of your life on it. Yeah. Um, and it is very much dependent on what your body needs. Some people like really soft mattresses and that very much caters for their spine and their curves and they get no problems from it. And other people need firmer mattresses. I would suggest a relatively firm mattress but with a softened topper. Right, yeah. So a firmer mattress where you're able to put more on top in order to create the softness for comfort that you might need, Right. but that gives enough support for your body and your spine 
that you don't sink into it like uh, like it's a bed of jelly or, or a waterbed. I think anyone, the sort of advent of waterbeds is kind of <laughs> very much gone because most people either drowned in their waterbed or it absolutely nailed their back and gave them back problems. So, um, Yeah, I, I have to yeah. say, I, I've never tried a waterbed myself, but it, it has never really appealed to me. The, 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 the problem that, 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 that we that. have is, is that... Um, <laughs> We, we, we have, I, I, I don't know what it's called, but, but, but one of these um, uh, memory foam type things with reinforced whatever. Yes. I, and yes. I, I do find it very comfortable. But when, when we've had, when we've been somewhere and on a spring mattress, well, I, I think I think Vicky weighs about forty three kilos, and uh, yes. I, I, I'm substantially more than that. And every time I turned off, she bounced, it almost bounced out of the bed. So. Correct, correct. So. And, that's, and, and that's been the other part is that historically sprung beds that don't have the toppers. When one person moves, the other one is either bouncing around or they've been pushed <laughs> exactly. off the other side. It's like being on a bouncy castle, right? So yeah, you, yeah. You squash down one area and the other one pops off, which is hilarious. But the better, newer beds, of course, the other person can be bouncing on the bed and the other one doesn't even know anything about it. And that's that's a good thing, yeah. uh, depending on obviously what you're doing. But um, but it's it's it definitely they have got a lot better than they used to historically. And yes, these memory foams again. I've read I've read both sides of the story sure. with memory foams in that it's not very good for heat conduction, so it gets pretty hot. Um, but also uh, it can work wonders for is somebody who's very very still at night. Uh, but I would definitely suggest that sleeping, for example, people always ask me what's the best sleeping position. And I always have to respond with, it's the one where you sleep the best. Yeah. And that's that's the, a bit of a, a tricky answer because, of course, it doesn't give you a direct answer, but it's true because some people sleep best on their back. Some people sleep best on their sides. I sleep best on my side, simple as that. Yeah, I, um, I, 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 I do as well, well Marcel, because... Well. If, if I try to sleep on my back, I wake myself up snoring. <laughs> right, right. So, better that. Or so better, than, better you wake yourself up than you get an elbow in the face <laughs> from you know, your sleeping partner. So, yeah, absolutely. Marcel, we're, we're going to take a short break. And when we oh, come yeah. back, we'll, we'll, we'll try and get back to the serious stuff, okay? Let's try. I'm just going to tell you, lads, by the way, I could never sleep on a waterbed because I used to get what well, I used to get seasick when I had a water bottle in the bed on, with my feet on it. <laughs> I can believe that. that. I can so, believe oh, no. bad idea that water. Water bed. Who, who came up with that idea? It's like the sloshing and everything. If you've got if your head's on that and your pillow, and all you can hear is sloshing water, surely you yep. can't get to sleep, can you? Yeah, 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 yeah. Like no, I can't imagine how that works. It'd be like being in the womb again, wouldn't it? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Well, uh, going to an ad break now. Yeah, okay, cool. <laughs> Welcome back. I'm Bill Anderson. We're coming live from the Costa del Sol with our regular contributor, uh, physical therapist, Marcel Salazar. Welcome back, Marcel. Thank we, you so much. We, Love being here. We, we, we did kind of get lost once or twice in that last bit, but it was fun anyway. So It happens. We, we, <laughs> we are talking about posture, Marcel. Uh, and, and you've talked about, about um, you know, postural assessment. What, where would you like to take us with this now? Well, I would like people to consider when was the last time they had, for example, neck pain or a headache? So the last time, for example, when, when did you have suffer from a headache that, for example, radiated up the back of the head or ended up around the front of the eyes? Now, if around the front of the eyes tends to be more a visual strain. So if you've been looking at a, a screen of any description, TV, computer, right. um, then pain above the eyes or behind the eyes is very often visual. But pain that runs up or a headache that's at the back of the neck or the base of the skull um, and really radiates is very much often related to posture. Right. So that's definitely an indicator. So what I wanted to try and talk about is what things can you look out for that would indicate that your posture is something that might need to be assessed, evaluated, and improved. So that would be, for example, starting at the top, mm. um, regular headaches and getting neck pain, most likely at the back. Right. In addition to pain, and not necessarily exclusively with pain, but potentially 
connected is limited movement in your head. So for example, if you're listening to the show, you're watching it live, you can try this right now. Turning your head left and right and seeing if you feel like there's limitation through the back of the neck can be an indication that your posture, mm. particularly obviously in your C-spine, needs to be addressed or improved. So if you feel that when you turn one way or the other, you feel tightness, restriction, pain, it goes more in one direction than another, then that can be an indication that your posture could do with some work and that perhaps some assessment is a good idea. Um, going, working down from that, you may find that you're experiencing a rounding of the shoulders. So rounding of the shoulder looks like either, as we've mentioned already, the hump of the upper back and or the shoulders being forward. Now we don't tend to feel that the shoulders are forward. What we tend to get is shoulder problems. So we'll get problems in the shoulder, either in the middle of the shoulder or at the back of the shoulder. And that'll be an indication that the shoulder is in the wrong position in your spine, uh, in your shoulder girdle, sorry. And that is in relation to your spine. So right. that can very much be improved by working on certain things in relation to your posture. And that makes a huge difference when repositioning the shoulders. When we put the, the shoulders in the correct place, and the spine is in the correct place, then you very often will have no shoulder pain because your shoulders are moving and performing correctly. These things massively translate to sports as well. So for golfers, paddlers, etc., if you're using your upper body a lot, then the chances are you're gonna be improving your strength, but in one or two directions only, not necessarily um, in a balanced way. If we can reduce rotate reduce uh, problematic rotation or compensation, performance can be massively improved. So we're going to be working with a lot more golfers going forward um, and paddlers as well, because when we can address the posture, we know we can improve performance and we can reduce handicaps or improve power, um, smash, etc. In each of those individual sports, so. It does make a huge difference. Then going down the body, lower back pain. So lower back pain, which is super common, is often related to weaknesses in the core. Right. So the foundation of all movement is the core. Mm. So the stronger we make the core, the better we'll be able to move overall, whether that be just walking down by the beach or um, attending some legends golf, golf tournament uh, in the, down here on the Costa del Sol. Yeah. So it really does depend. What, 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 what do you mean by the core, Marcel? Yeah. Good, good. So the core, most people think <clears throat> of the core as, uh, let's say, doing sit-ups, right? So most people think, okay, oh, I need to have a six-pack to have a strong core. And that's entirely inaccurate. Um, the core is, yes, made up of the abdominal muscles, but the abdominal muscles that you see in a six pack is just a small part of the whole core. So the right. abdominal muscles that are on your belly or under your belly, depending on the size of it, <laughs> um, are part of your, your core muscles. But also beneath that, you have your pelvic core muscles. Right. So those are very, very important as well. And engaging in those or engaging those can be quite challenging and it gets more difficult the older we become. And that's where we, where we can talk very briefly about things like incontinence. There is a connection between those two things, which gets more tricky the older we become. But it can affect anybody at any age, really. Right. And so the stronger we develop those deep muscles in our lower abdominals are very important. Then we can talk about the muscles that are between our legs, which are called the adductor muscles. So they are also part of our um, core muscles. So if you think about putting your hands on your inner thighs and you squeeze your legs together, that, that, that stringy muscle that you can feel is are called the adductor muscles. Those are part of your core. And right. They play a very important role. Then as we come around, we've got the hip flexors, which are the <clears throat> muscles that allow our knees to lift up. They are the part of the core. Then as we go round to the backside, we've got your glutes, which is your buttocks. And there are numerous muscles 
in the buttocks and beneath the major muscle of the buttocks, which are very important and also the core. And then we've got the lower back and the lower back muscles there. And that is the core. So to finalize that on either side, we have the obliques, which are on this side of our body. So that whole area mm. is the core. And so that's the core of our body and the origin of all movement. And the stronger our core is, generally speaking, the better our posture is. And generally speaking, the better our performance is in whatever capacity, whether that be walking, running, jogging, or a sport. Right. So now, I, what, before, I was going to let the boss jump in, with, but I wanted to ask you, right? Yeah. I'm being serious now. You're both expecting a, a conversation stopper now, aren't you? And I'm trying uh, to be serious. Something good. Something good. You're looking worried. But, but no, what is, what is it? What I was going to say was, one of the things that I do or I've done for years and years, rather than do a lot of, I mean, I've done sit-ups, but I did leg raises, and that mm -hmm. that helps. That I felt that that just below your belly button, all those muscles there, that's tightened that up so much over the years. Yeah. Just doing these leg raises, and I also cut as I'm doing that, I'll come up and touch my toes at the same time. And the other thing, I do, the other thing I do is go on my side, lean on my elbow, and just rest in that position at an angle like that. Mm -hmm. for about 45 seconds on mm -hmm. each side and repeat that three times on each side. Okay. And so, that, and that's what I've, that's basically uh, what I've done for my cure. That's really good. I mean, so those, those leg raises, are you doing both legs or one leg at a time? Doing both legs at the same both time. Legs. Not like that. So that exercise is, is predominantly for the lower abdominal muscles, which is exactly what you want to be doing. But if you have an unstable or a painful back, you don't want to be doing that. No, no, you don't. Okay? Yeah, I was going to say that. If you got a dodgy back, dodgy back, don't you try. Got a dodgy it. back. Now that would be something you definitely want to build up to, which would be awesome. But if you want to prevent lower back pain and you want to uh, improve your abdominal muscles, particularly the lower ones, that is a great exercise. Straight legged deadlifts are really good. Uh, sorry, straight-legged lifts, as you said, um, are really, really good for your uh, lower abdominals. Um, if you're combining it with reaching up to your toes with your hands, that's actually using all the abdominals as a result. So that's an even that's a natural progression that is even more challenging. But I would suggest for people who want to start doing it, start by lying on your back and just do one leg at a time. Yeah. You keep one leg straight, the other one level, and you just raise one up, and then you lower it down under control. And again, like you say, you can do that 15 times, three times in a row, and raising one leg up and then changing over. And as long as that doesn't give you any back problems, you can do that for a week or two, and then start to, to build it up where you keep your legs off the ground. So rather mm. than resting one leg, you actually keep them, the heels off the floor, and then yeah. you raise one leg up and then you lower it down and you raise the other one up. And that's going to be considerably more difficult if you've got both feet left lifted off the floor. And then you can build up to doing what you were doing, which is using both legs coming up at the same time. That's, yeah. uh, that's, well, that's really I tell cool. you what, so I tell you what, the, the good thing to remember is don't wear trainers when you're doing it. But do it bare feet so there's no extra weight on it. If that's you right. Start, <laughs> you're right. If you're old, or if you really want to push it, put some Doc Martens on and then oh, do it. Yeah. <laughs> That's the kind of stuff I'm talking about. I was yeah. just thinking if Bill tried that seriously, mate. If you did, when I step, I mean, I've done that for years, but people have said to me when they tried it with both feet, they've said the first time they've gone to, to do it like this, it feels like they've been cut in half. <laughs> it's, it's, it's seriously hard, but the result, the, your results after the difference in your stomach after, you'll be like, wow, how can Oh, yeah. This. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. No, it works really, really well. There's a there's a variation that you could try, which is to put the underside of your feet together and then raise your legs up like that. So your your knee you're laying like a frog leg position, and then bring that up. That's really interesting. Straight. This this sounds like the little chamber chamber of torture or horrors or something here. You know. Yeah. <laughs> like absolutely. For me, I don't know about. That. 
<laughs> there are, I, I can think of at least 10 abdominal exercises that would probably terrify you, but they are really good. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, get my legs together. Try that. that was Come good. on, Dave. That's it. Get the legs up. Get my feet together. Try, try together. That's it. <laughs> oh, crikey. Right. Oh, break I'm set up. Up to Sunday while I get my feet together. Like, so, never do that. <laughs> but, but, but Marcel, I, I I do have another question, but I, I I don't want to I don't want to stop you in your flow here. No, um, no, you go ahead. Ask all the questions. Well, well no you problem. know, you, you you talked about a couple of osises, like was it kyphosis and lodosis. What yes. about scoliosis, which is um, yes. um, another thing which obviously affects posture? It affects a lot of women in particular. Yes. Um, but how would people deal with with this kind of physical change in in yeah. the, the the shape of the spine in yeah, terms of absolutely, absolutely. Um, posture? So scoliosis is a condition that I, I definitely see and treat. Um, it generally is a congenital issue, so it is you are genetically predisposed to it. Unfortunately, um, it is absolutely something that you can control in terms of managing the discomfort that it tends to create right so if you imagine what's happening if any of our listeners um have never experienced or seen scoliosis what we're talking about here is the spine is going over the the upper part of the spine so the part of the spine that's between the shoulder blades most commonly although it can occur at any part but most commonly the part of the spine that's between the shoulder blades goes either to the left or to the right Okay. And it curves laterally. So yes. instead of having a natural curve in our spine, in our C spine, our thoracic spine, and our lumbar spine, we then have another curve. So then that curve might go sideways as well. And right. as you can imagine, what that does is it affects height. It can affect the, the height of your shoulders because one shoulder will potentially be higher than the other. Right. Um, and it can also create significant pinching in the middle of the back because of course you've got the curve occurring laterally which then affects the muscles around the spine so it can be quite uncomfortable yeah um but i've, I've known patients who have lived a very normal life it's unfortunate when it affects young people but it does um but you can still live a normal active life with scoliosis depending on the level of it Right. If it's very severe, there have been some amazing progressive progression in surgery where they've been able to intervene and literally reshape the spine and re-straighten it. Yeah. But those are quite few and far between. And it's a very, very extensive operation. But um, it's some amazing things have been done with, with severe cases of, of curvatures in the spine where literally the spine is, is like a roller coaster. It's, it's yeah. crazy. Well, um, we 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 actually have, but but probably known to yourself, uh, uh, a f a family down here with, with a young girl who has a number of physical and and uh, mental problems, and right. she had horrendous scoliosis to the point that her internal organs were beginning to get crushed, wow. with the scoliosis, and she she did go to Barcelona for surgery for it, and had to have a halo fitted to her head and. Uh, yes. in, in Enormously wow. complicated, but the good news is that it's taken all the pressure. But just the little bit of straightening that they've been able to do has taken yeah. the pressure off the internal organs. And I, I know Brilliant. this is very extreme, the very extreme end of it. Yes. Um, yeah. But um, you know, it, it is. It is. A, it's a very costly because you can't usually get these things done on on the National Health Service. No. Um, and um, very dangerous operation as well. But in nice. in in the case of little Lara. Um, she she's done very very well with it, and that I, I mean that that is absolutely incredible. And like you say, they are, they tend to do those types of procedures under the most extreme cases. And obviously, she's a young girl, um, and you know that that means recuperation is much better. The, the the most extreme cases that I've seen have only been done on young people because, of course, their ability to recuperate is sure. much better. Sure. Um, and obviously it was urgent as well, because if it's crushing and compressing her organs, then, you know, she's going to have multiple other issues as well. Absolutely. Um, yeah. But I, where I've actually treated um, uh, a brother and sister who suffered from it both, um, and they were both in their teens, 
but the the, the process of um, tissue release manipulation and stretching exercises was fantastic because it basically slows down the the process of the curvatures but also alleviates pain right and that sure. alleviation of pain allows for the return to normal life which is absolutely fantastic mm. and obviously with the introduction of more um activities and certain types of working out it can make a huge difference and that that, that type of thing can be done by all, anyone at any age sure i was gonna, i was going to say actually there's a there's a golfer Pro golfer on the DP PGA World Tour, uh, Tahit Sigala. He's got it. He's got a go. he's got a case of it, but he's he's managed. He's overcome it. Obviously, he's an Indian. I think he's got his Indian or Sri Lankan roots, mm. and okay. he's born with it. But he's yeah. uh, he's overcome it, and he's you know he's a, he's a superstar now. He's uh, he's only twenty three or something, and he's wow. uh, you know. Well, you see, that's the thing is that it doesn't have to it doesn't have to affect your life in terms of ruining it. It, it visually, you know, it might be um, it might not be pleasing or it might it, it would it could be classified, I guess, as a as a disability. But it doesn't have to be a disability because it doesn't necessarily depending on the severity of it, it doesn't affect how you are living your life. The mm. difficulty is that he probably does experience pain. He probably has to get regular therapy. Um, he obviously probably does specific exercises to help support his back so that he can continue to perform at the level that he is. But he hasn't stopped it from allowing him to become an international golfer, which is fantastic. Yeah. So yeah. He's, a, he's a great a, a great advert for kyphosis being something that is difficult, but certainly not something that can stop you from, from performing at a high level. Yeah. So, Marcel, our, our time is, is running away with us, and, and I, I, want, I want to give you the last few minutes to talk about the things that you want to, the messages you want to get across. Yeah. So, it's over to you. We've got two minutes. Okay, thank you so much. So, I mean, basically, what I wanted to just share is that, that we don't tend to think about our posture perhaps <clears throat> as much as we should, but we all know about posture. And so what I wanted to share is that obviously here at Strong for Life, the clinic in Calypso, we now are very much dedicating um, and expanding the team to be able to provide support for those of you that perhaps are either unaware or have or want to improve your posture and your performance in whatever capacity that may be. So whether right. it's you want to just be able to walk a little better or you want to play golf a little better, or you want to play paddle a little better, by addressing or assessing at the very least your posture, you're going to be able to find out how and if we can help you to do that. Mm. So if you find that you're getting upper back pain, you're getting regular headaches, you're getting lower back pain, you get gluteal pain, so pain in your buttocks, things like that, that limit you it's probably because your posture or your core is not as strong as it could be and if you've got some support then we could help you to probably feel a lot less pain mm. and perform a lot lot better yeah so e even if if someone has for example back pain getting this postural assessment might help to identify wh where, oh, where some of it is coming from yeah 100 percent, absolutely yeah <clears throat> Marcel, thank you so much for joining us again. Um, Absolute pleasure. And and I think very a very practical topic uh, that, that I think all of us can can begin to process. Time is gone. Thank you for joining us, Marcel. Have a great weekend, Dave. Thank you for looking after us. Everyone who's listening okay. in, please have a great weekend. Stay safe. Don't get burned with the sun, at least. <laughs> and uh, we'll be back next week at the same time. Lovely. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.